Hey there, welcome back to Doing It With Jason. I'm Jason and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this really cool I-beam shelf. This was a really fun project. Anyone can do this. Even if you were just getting into woodworking, this shelf is doable. The paint that we're using in this project pretty much does all the work for you and it will make it rust, it'll make it look old. It's very, very cool. And be sure, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, please hit that subscribe button. So let's get started. So I started this project by cutting some plywood with my table saw. I cut three pieces, two are smaller, which will be the top and bottom, and one a little bit longer to make the middle section. This is totally up to you of what size you'd like to do. I believe mine were about four inches on the top and bottom and about six inches for the middle piece. Now you do not need a table saw. You can also use a skill saw for this, but if you do have a table saw, you can cut it at a 10 degree angle as you see right there, and it gives it a really cool effect of a different style beam, which we'll talk more about the two different kind of beams that are found in nature later. Next, I just sanded everything really quickly with 120 grit sandpaper, and that's it. Okay, now we have all of our pieces cut out, and what we're gonna be doing is assembling them. What I'm gonna be using is a screw gun and just some drywall screws, inch and a quarter, inch and a half works fine, and that's it. So figuring out which way you want these things to go is gonna be our first step. So always do a little dry testing and dry fit, and we know this one, we want this to be centered, and then we wanna be able to have it like that. All right, so I have it all set up. Now to make life easier, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some clamps on this thing, and that way I can do both at the same time. It makes it a little quicker. You don't need clamps, not something that you have to go out and get if you do not have, but if you do have some, you know, use them. All right, so this thing's all clamped. Now I'm just gonna go ahead, and you only need a couple screws. Uh, nothing crazy so you're gonna find somewhere about the center and make yourself a little mark and that way I know my screw is gonna go right into the meat of the plywood that's underneath and you want the screw head to sink in just a little you can use a counter sinking bit or pre-drill this uh, but plywood you don't have to worry really about it coming apart or anything on you without pre-drilling so All right, so now we're ready to unclamp it. Set those out of the way. And now what I did on the table saw with that 10 degree cut right here, uh, it gives it the, you know, more of an I-beam type look, I think, but there are two different kinds of I-beams. You've got the I-beam like this, and then you also have just the straight I-beam, which is why, you know, if you don't have a table saw, you can use a skill saw and you'll be able to set them up the same exact way. Whereas, you know, this one's gonna be sitting like that, this one will be like this, and this one will be like that. So it'll still give you a cool I-beam look, even using a skill saw to cut this out. If I could straighten it up a little bit, that's wobbly. But anyway, you get the idea, right? So you can do this with just, you know, no table saw. Uh, so yeah, we'll make that one later. But we're gonna focus on this one. All right, so now for this, we have the holes from the screw, which is no big deal because Dixie Bell also makes a Dixie Bell mud, which works awesome. This one is the black. So you can just put a little bit on your finger and you can fill these holes. So the cool part about this is that once this is dry, I can come back and lightly sand it and boom, the holes will be disappeared, never there again. You don't have to worry about using some kind of wood filler or which one to go to. Dixie Bell has them right there on their site, and links are down below. So we're gonna set this aside, let it dry, and then come back and make this thing look like heavy metal. All right, so our I-beam is all nice and dry with the Dixie Bell mud, and now first step we're gonna do is I'm gonna paint it with some Dixie Bell paint. You can pick any color you'd like. I'm just gonna use the caviar. So just put one nice coat over the whole entire piece, and then let it dry. All right, so this thing is pretty much all dry. Uh, just a note, I did paint both sides. That way when I chop this thing in half, those will be the sides that'll be exposed and then the back side where it's not been painted will be against the wall, so it's no big deal. Uh, and if you don't have a chop saw or anything to cut this in half, then I would suggest just building two of these, but smaller, and doing the same exact thing. 
Okay, so now we are ready to make this thing look like metal with the iron paint from Dixie Belle. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool, just the black like this, because of how kind of matte finish it is. But we're gonna make this thing look all rusted and actually like some cool metal. Shake it very, very well because this paint has actual metal flakes in it that is actually gonna rust and you want them to be everywhere and nice and even. So we're gonna open this thing up and it's only gonna take one coat of this on the piece. And the main thing is we're gonna be spraying it with the activator, which is what makes it actually rust and cause the chemical reaction. But that has to be done while the paint is wet. So that's why it is important to work in smaller sections to get the best results. Now we're gonna take our patina spray. There is a blue one or a greenish blue, and then there's a purple one, which I dropped and broke the actual container. So I got it in this nice little mister and I'm gonna be using both of these. All right, so now we're gonna lightly spritz it on here while the piece is actually still wet. And you do not want the uh, paint, the patina paint to be dry or it will not work. And now we got our green patina paint spray. We're gonna use that as well using the same spray bottle. And I'm putting it on pretty liberally. You don't have to put it on too much as like I'm doing, but there we go. All right, so I let this dry about three or four hours now. And I really totally love this paint. Uh, it's so easy. So all you, you saw everything I did. All I did was spray it with this stuff and man, awesome. So the best part is it's gonna to continue to rust. So if I want it to get a little more rusty, just leave it alone for you know another few hours, check on it. Now you could just leave it alone, let it continue to rust, or you could stop it anywhere along its journey by lightly dabbing anything that might be a little damp with a paper towel. And then you could use the patina guard and put that on it and it will stop it in its tracks. It'll stay exactly like it is. It'll seal it up a little bit and you're ready to rock. So next step on our shelf making journey is we're gonna take it to the chop saw and cut it to the final size. Can I get some help? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the top part of our shelf, which mine just so happens to be plexiglass. Nice and clean. Look at that, you can't do that with glass. Well, I guess you could as long as it's not tempered, but plexiglass is awesome. Go ahead and screw it right into the wood slash faux metal beam. And you could add a few more screws here, 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 just if you want that extra support, but I'm gonna be mounting it on the wall behind both of these. So it's gonna sit like that. And there we go, we got an I-beam shelf. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you have any questions at all, please leave them down below in the comment section. I will be more than happy to answer it and help you guys out. We'll see you next time.